time for I'm not going to read that. <laughs> it is 9.01 a.m. U.S. Pacific Standard Time here in the year of our Lord, 2021 A.D. Friday, November 12th already. Wow. What's up, guys? I have a guest for you in the second hour, in the coming hour after some beautiful music is my plan. I'm going to play some... The last song on Suffering in the Hideous Thieves, Rats in Heaven album, Amazing Grace. It's like an 11-minute song. That'll be at the top of this coming hour. And then, Fanatic is coming on. So, if you're here for that, skip ahead. But, um, I have a fun show for you guys. Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick, Rittenhouse, The American People, the clampdown on free and true speech. It's really true speech that they're really clamping down on. Seemingly. Seemingly. And maybe some speculation. Who knows? Because there is a lot of speculation going, going on. And if the speculation goes counter to their narrative, it's, it's a mess. But anyway, guys. Let's get right on with the show! Oh, it's the hate report, the hate report, la la la. Oh, it's the hate report, the hate report, la la la. Good morning, guys. I hope you're enjoying the beautiful uh, seascape that we showed and some fun memes for you from the uh, our elected representatives. <laughs> Much better than the Pfizer meme. And uh, Trump versus DeSantis, whose side are you on? Oh, it's the hate report, the hate report, la la la. Oh, it's the hate report, the hate report, la la la. I am fine. I was thinking about, we had our men's forum. We have monthly men's forums at Bond. I say we. I like to attend the monthly men's forums at Bond here in Los Angeles, first Thursday of the month. And I met an American Indian who, or a couple of American Indians, who saw the ocean for the first time. Uh, The day that they came and, and visited Bond for a men's forum. Yes, the men's forums are for everyone, including the American Indians, or whatever they want to call themselves, Navajo and all them. And uh, it's so great. They are excellent. Oh, man, my Twitter just crashed. Uh, Yes, that was the AJ Gallardo, Gallardo original. The Hake Report theme song. Shout out to AJ Gallardo. And shout out to Trevor Wesley for the uh, different version that is played Monday through Thursday. I have another musician coming on the show. Unfortunately, I don't have any of his music to show to you, but Fanatic. I call him Fanatic. <laughs> he was on The Fallen State, and I tweeted at him because he was tweeting about, oh, you're supposed to continue to sin after you're a Christian. I'm like, no, you're not. It's in the Bible. And then he's all, this is a difficult conversation to have on Twitter. Let's, when can we talk in person? So I invited him on the show. Very cool. But I have to share with you a down-to-earth, seemingly anyway, I don't know, we shall see, politician. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump, but he is a down-to-earth politician too. Am I right? I think so. I was Toying with sharing this clip with you. This is clip 10. This clip with you, Ed Durr, D-U-R-R, out of, what, North Carolina or somewhere? This guy who's run for office and won as a state senator for New Jersey, North Carolina. What a mess. Uh, This is a political ad that seems... Kind of homemade. Yeah, yeah, I know. I uh, Disgusting. Kid Cudi, Kid Cuddy in a dress. Kid Cutie in a dress? Not cute. Disgusting. I'll get to that, hopefully. 
or maybe I'll just skip it. Just show it to you guys twice. Ugh. If people were reacting to the opening scenes, but look at this political ad for this guy who ran for state senate in uh, New Jersey, Ed Durr. He was a trucker or is a trucker. Listen to this clip and watch it, and then uh, he won. And I have a little interview to share with you, or por- portion of an interview to share with you. Watch this. Hello, my name is Edward Durr. I'm running <laughs> for New Jersey State Senate. I've lived here all my life, raising my three kids. In 2020, my opponent sat by and watched as Governor Murphy forced nursing homes to take in COVID-19 patients, resulting in the death of over 8,000 of our seniors. He remained silent as Governor Murphy, with his lockdown and mandates, forced the closing of over one-third of our small businesses, costing New Jersey family thousands of jobs. He has done nothing as seven out of every 10 moves are leaving the state, placing a heavier burden on those of us who remain. Terrible. The Senate president has spent 20 years in Trenton. Higher taxes, increasing debt, and a rising cost of living. We deserve better. New Jersey, it's time for a change. Motorcycle. So together, Let's end single party rule. Vote for me, Edward Dare, for Senate. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that nice? A for Ed for NJ committee. And so that was an Ed. Dur- <laughs> and I don't know if you can pick up on it, Mega Boomer, says Chris. <laughs> I don't know if you could, maybe he's even Gen X too, to be honest, but the same thing, right? So many Gen X are basically boomers. Uh, <laughs> the, the, I don't know if you can tell if you're listening on the audio feed, but on the video feed, the camera's all shaky. It may have even been shot on a cell phone camera, and he's just walking towards the camera, and it's not, like, professionally done, seemingly. And it was... But it has, that, that's part of the charm. You're pro- Maybe you'll see a bunch of fake uh, hometown people start to do this type of thing. So he actually won his uh, race, interestingly. He beat out a, a real politician. By real politician, I mean a phony politician. And I don't know. I don't know how this guy is going to end up. Fox News has him on all the time. Well, Tucker Carlson of Fox News... A great guy, seemingly. Interviewed him, and I saw this out on Twitter. And then I will get to your calls, guys. And hopefully if I, uh, in the second hour with the guest, Fanatic, we will take your calls as well. Talking about the Bible and uh, maybe Colin Kaepernick and mess stuff, mess like that. Here is Ed Durr on his conversation with Steve Sweeney, the Democrat whom he just defeated. Listen to this interview, brief interview, portion of an interview, with uh, Tucker and Ed Durr. Have you talked to Sweeney since you dethroned him? I mean, how baffled is he? Yes, yes. We we had a uh, phone conversation yesterday after he had given his uh, press conference to the media, and he congratulated me and just wished me luck to do well for South Jersey. Nice. So he was a gentleman about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, w- he was a gentleman. Good for him. And, and we, we, you know, and like I told him, I said, you know, if he ever needed anything, just give me a call, you know, because I'm, I'm his representative now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's so great. But Mr. Durr, congratulations. It's great to talk to you. And the news is that he spent just $153 on his, win- on his winning campaign. Isn't that cool? But uh, they want to, they don't like the voice of the people being able to be amplified. In the olden days on YouTube, normal YouTubers who weren't the mainstream media corporations, approved media, the, you, could, you could go viral and have a, ha- be on the front page above CNN, Commie Nonsense Network, NBC, CBS, ABC, uh, Fox News, and all of those, uh, MSLSD, 
and all the MSDNC, you know, MSNBC, and all those, Tucker's laugh though, <laughs> and all those people, but now YouTube prefers the fake news media, right? And Twitter too will suppress the non-blue check mark people. And they'll suppress you, especially if you're more conservative. You'll notice that the conservative replies under when Trump was on Twitter and stuff, they were all more suppressed and the liberal replies were more amplified. According to uh, independent journalists' analysis and uh, different hacker type analysis. So the social media is supposed to be more the voice of the people. <laughs> And, uh, they're trying to, they're trying to change that. Facebook, you know, the clamp down on Facebook? In the name of these whistleblowers, these female whistleblowers? That's an attack on you. It's not an attack on Facebook. Because Facebook will be fine no matter what they do. They're in bed with the government against the people. Disgusting. Noah's Art Kansas says, I miss Trump's tweets, but his statements from the desk of Donald Trump are a good supplement. I agree, man. And they're able to be longer. <laughs> so right on, Ed Durr. That's cool. Very cool. Let me get to Black Stepdad. It is Friday. We'll have a fun Lucy Goosey Friday show. Hake's a lizard person personified. <laughs> oh, man, Black Stepdad just dropped off. <laughs> oh, okay, he's back on the line, I guess. No. Is this Black Stepdad? Oh, okay, no. All right, never mind. Sorry, Black Stepdad, you dropped off. Get a real phone. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's Black Stepdad. <laughs> Hello? Hey. Hey. What's up? Nice to hear from you. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Can you hear me all right? I'm at work. I can hear you fine. You come in and maybe right, a cool. touch quiet. Press three if he's quiet. Press one if he's fine. Press two if he's too loud. Chat. Go ahead. Huh. All right. Um... Like a week ago, you had um, you said you disagreed about paid family leave. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? Because I agree with it. You agree with paid family leave? Yes. All right. I was on it. Oh, you were on it. So you yep. had a ch- so you had a son or or a or a daughter, and then yep. uh, your job was forced to pay you to not work. No, 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 no. That's where you're wrong, Hake. The the, the your your employer uh, isn't entitled to pay you. You can either use your PTO, your pay time off, or you can apply for um, unemployment. And when you apply for unemployment, they only give you three quarters of your check. And so the uh, unemployment. So you got to be on unemployment. Uh, no, I don't some... know. no, I didn't like it. No, I use my I use my PTO because I want to get my full amount of check. Oh, okay, paid time off. And yeah, paid exactly. time off, what kind of, well, I don't want to dox the company or you or anything, but uh, nah, I a work, lot of I companies. I aerospace company. Okay. I don't know if I believe in this, especially if I don't believe in it, because look at who's pushing it. <laughs> that's the, that's <laughs> yeah, the yeah, number exactly. one thing I don't, why I don't believe in it. I, I agree. It, it, it does sound bad on surface, but it's all right. You know, it, it's, it's cool because you can get that, that bonding time, which, oh, I mean, no, on, I don't man. think any, I don't think anyone yeah, is going to disagree with bonding with your child, you know? <laughs> Listen, it's a, it's, a, it's a scam because they cause the problem that makes uh, people have to work longer than they normally would have to work be- in order to make en- enough money to live in Southern California, for example. Because sure. they're the ones who set it up so that the cost of living is, is high. And the payment, the money is worth less. Um, and now they're swooping in with their fake solution. The real solution is mm-hmm. uh, deport the illegals. Um, <laughs> end, oh, yeah, I'm all for that. <laughs> end the welfare, get rid of minimum wage and different things like that. Yeah. Um, stop the clamp down on our, uh, on our businesses in the name of the China virus, for example. And uh, all these yeah. other things, the environmental stuff. There's all these regulations that Trump was cutting, and that's more the sure. solution. We're not this paid family leave thing. It's, it's complicating things. It's coming up with false solutions to problems that they created. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so you're saying, so, so would you say that bonding with your child is a bad thing for the first month, we'll say? 
if you're not working because you don't you don't need that much time to bond with your with your children honestly I agree I agree as as a father you don't you're kind of useless to a newborn child <laughs> you know you don't do much right but you, that's... you can you can help your wife you know who just came out of a keeping bird you can help her like move around and help her with the baby so she can sleep and all that so you, a, a man should only take about I took two weeks oh, okay so, I didn't take a whole like what Pete Buttigieg. You didn't take two pre-tend. two months like Pete Boot Edge Edge. <laughs> no, no, I ain't no better. <laughs> <laughs> so and, um, and go ahead. That, no, I want to say too. Um, it's okay to use the word beater, man. I'll speak <laughs> up for the Mexicans. You can you can say it. We, right. don't, we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody and said that's that such an eighties term. Beater. Yeah. Beater. Oh, let's keep it alive. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> And then here, here we go. I'm going to go on a quick rant because i got to get back to work. Here go ahead. Go. You're, you've had a lot of calls lately that have been just crazy, bro. These fools have been talking about Kyle Rittenhouse. Dr. ADD is calling about not having a job. Yeah. John is talking about this and this and that and that. Why don't these fools get their act together? You know? <laughs> yeah, they should get like, their act together. It, what, what, did, it, what, did, a, what did they say about Kyle? Oh, you're talking about, like, Tony talking about Kyle Rittenhouse? Yeah, you yeah, know, it's like, ridiculous. Like, if 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 the roles were reversed, he'd be up in arms. Oh, you know, it's okay. For, it's okay for him to hate on the white man, but God forbid you say something about the black. Donnie you Armour know? says, "Congrats on the child." I think is what he's saying. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, how long ago was that? Yeah. Uh, about a year. Oh, okay, nice man. Yeah, so I have a little, I have a little baby, so it's pretty cool, bro. You know, yeah. have a child and you'll see what's up. <laughs> right on. Well, it's good to hear right, from you, man. Right. So you do you still agree with paid family leave, or do you see my point that it's uh, like a false solution to a problem they created? I, I get that. It makes sense. Yeah. But I, I still agree with paid family leave. You know, Dang. It, it, it's nice to bond with your child, bro. Yeah, but, I mean, you can do that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I get, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. I get it, bro. That's a, that's a disagreement we can have, but it's all good. Yeah. No, because yeah, look so at maybe, the snakes maybe, who are pushing this. Biden. Biden is one of the snakes who's pushing this stuff. They, these people yeah, don't I care about it. families. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, and I get it. I get it. Yeah, it's like, it's a, it's a mess. Paying people it's not to mess. work is not a good solution. <laughs> yeah, but it's, your employer is not paying you. But I do get that you can, you can get money. It's a mess, bro. We can get it this another day. I got to get back to work. Talk okay. To ADD, which you should be doing, bro. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, take care. <laughs> right, uh, take care, Black Stepdad. Take care. All right, bro. See you. All right. Yeah. Dr. ADD, get a job. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. Shout out to the Twitch. What's up, Jib Jab? Nice to see you guys. Is the Facebook crew here? Am I live on Odyssey? O D Y S E E? I figured it out, guys. Nice to see you. Uh, he's a trucker and he owns a Harley. Or was that a Harley? Um,. Let me get to Scott in Reno, Nevada. He wants to talk about my modern day debate appearance, I think. Scott, first time caller, what's up? Howdy, James. How you doing? Doing well. You're... All right. I'm hearing some, like, background noise or something. Are you uh, on your Harley? Let me try. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm on my Harley. There you go. Let me just unplug this. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me better now? Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Are you on a speakerphone now? No, yeah, it accidentally switched, but now I didn't mean to. My apologies. <laughs> wow, Scott. <laughs> so, is that better? Sorry this is that. this is sounding better, I think. Okay, I had to leave that room. There's like a little fan. Anyway, oh, I so see. yeah, dude, your debate. So first of all, I wanted to say you did a great job, man. I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought the first half you were a little weak on the guy, but then when you got into the Q and A, that's when you kind of let it unload. Yeah. Um, and I realized when you did that you were just kind of waiting and seeing him out, right? Yeah, you know what? I I didn't know what to do with this guy, and I could have and should have probably jumped in because he tended to ramble and he was not he, unlike me. He was a liar, right? Yeah, he was saying stuff that's vague. That honestly, I don't know where he stood because he was saying stuff that pretty much like Donald J. Trump might say about everyone. Yeah, can have a, get their own property and come together, right. be united. But ultimately- but yeah. yeah, I think the debate yeah. is is a bad debate in general because I used to be like a Randy and objectivist, right? And what's that mean? Ayn Randy Rand, and objectivist. Ayn Rand, she oh, okay, was like yeah. the the modern philosopher of capitalism, right. right? 
and she hates atheist God. Jewish she lady, right? Absolutely despised. Yep, married to uh, to a giant banking cartel. Oh, really? Divorced her husband. Man. Hates God. Thinks that reason and logic are the way to go. Right? Did she write Ash- so Atlas the, Shrugged? Yeah, yeah. She wrote Without that head, too. Atlas Shrugged. Yeah. A bunch of really great stuff, anti-communism stuff that brings up great points. Cool. But she she agreed with them that God was the problem. Oh. And so she tried to take God out of the people and replace it with money. And that's why we have a lot of the modern problems. Huh. And so the debate itself is flawed because when it comes down to the core, the family is the most important. And what she created was the individual being the most important. Interesting. I Interesting, man. I was so now you notice that I didn't say that communism was I said the communism and capitalism are not opposites because capitalism is a stepping stone to communism as this communists see and capitalism is not it's it's only right when you have morals morality with it. Yeah, Yeah, because look at the immoral people (laughs) commie capitalists we have now pushing pornography and all that. Well, and now. Because the family and the family values are gone, we have a government where the majority doesn't have children. They have no stake in the future. How could they ever make a decision about the future if they literally have no stake in it? Yeah, and even nowadays, even the misguided mothers and so-called fathers who are, who are, do have families, but they're liberals, they're, they don't even know what's best for their children or their, themselves. Well, yeah, they're all lost in their mind, right? Yeah. None of them have any trust in God or any hope or faith that, that so if do they you, just try and do the right thing, the right things happen. So are you a, are you more a capitalist or more a socialist or both or what? Um, Out of curiosity. You know, I, I, it's, an, it's an interesting question because I've studied, like, you know, econ- economics for a while and economies. Yeah. And I don't think any of them work. I think the only thing that works is, like, is like community. So I'm, but that's I'm not a communist at all. But what I'm saying is, once you create a resource that is larger than the community that needs the resource, it loses value. So, for example, the U.S. dollar used to be a U.S. dollar. After World War II, it became the world dollar, and every dollar was backed by our oil standard. That just simply can't exist. There's not a community large enough. Huh. Okay. Because it's all about locality, right? Like what you have that is your resource. Yeah, I know it's not an answer because I don't have an answer, but I just know like I can identify. How old are you? I'm 36. Did you used to be an atheist? Oh yeah, yeah. I was like super anti-religious and uh, bought into all the new age like satanic bull. Wow. Were you ever a liberal or or were you more like a? No, I was raised. Pretty darn conservative, um, and I was raised Catholic, so you know what that's like. Um, and I just ended up uh, kind of getting lost to metaphysics, quantum physics in college. Oh, okay. And then destroyed myself completely trying to create a life and ended up uh, finding God in the process and realizing what truth was. Have you, Do you have your own family now? No, no. I actually... Um, Kind of just came back to God a couple of years ago, and I'm really getting out of all the debt that I uh, built up. And I moved to Reno just a few months ago for for a new job. Nice. Got out of Mama's house, so Jesse'd be proud. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> proud of you. Wait, you said you're thirty. Did you say you're thirty six? Yep, thirty six. <laughs> so you moved out no, at thirty five, thirty six. But I moved out at twenty two. I moved out again at twenty seven. You know, but yeah, every yeah. time. I destroyed myself because I didn't have any foundation. Oh, yeah. So you returned. God, are you right? Catholic again? No, 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 no. I'm, I, I would say the biggest reason I turned away from church is because of the hypocrisies within it, especially Catholicism. Um, and I always kind of viewed things the way Jesse viewed them, but anytime I went to someone who was quote unquote Christian, they told me I was wrong and I wasn't Christian. Um, so I just turned away from it completely until I kind of started finding like more truth, deeper things. And I found Jesse and I was like, this is literally what I've been thinking. Nice. My whole life. Yeah. So that was cool. And I really appreciate all the work you guys do. So now you're a Christian. 
Yeah. That's cool, man. Absolutely. Nothing better, right? Right, far That's as amazing. I know. I mean, I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. I've suffered and suffered and suffered, and <laughs> life is amazing now. Every time I have adversity or a challenge, I look forward to it, and it's just cool. It's just, like, fun and engaging on a level it's never been before. Nice, man. Well, congratulations. I, uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for your help. Yeah, thank you, man. And thank you for the feedback on this uh, commie capitalist mess. <laughs> <laughs> right? It is a mess. It yeah. is a mess. Well, keep up the great work. I appreciate it. I'm trying to tune into your show more and more. Listen to Jeffrey, Jesse every day. Jeffrey, that's funny. Um, listen to Jesse every day. But uh, sometimes your your show starts when my workday starts, so I'm not always able to watch. Yeah. No worries, man. That's how, that's how I was. I would... As a listener for the Jesse Lee Peterson show, I would tune in when I could. And uh, you, gotta wor- you got work to do. That's cool. I respect it. Take care, man. Thank you. Thank you. All How right. All right. Before I get back to calls, guys, I want to talk to Rick next. He wants to talk about Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse. Somebody says, James, hey, 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 hey. Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent. <laughs> I know, man. I will be talking about Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse on... Uh, the Hippy Dippy round table. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> Sorry, kids. I shouldn't say idiot, should I? Uh, pod round table podcast. There it is. Uh, the top left guy, if you're looking at the screen here, is Dylan Burns. Dylan Burns TV. He's the Twitch host who hosts this Hippy Dippy round table discussion. In the middle, top middle, is Vosh. Whom I've interviewed on my show, Jesse's interviewed on the Fallen State, just a, just a degenerate. Uh, next to him is, uh, I'm blanking on that guy, Box something, I forget what his name is. Let me see if I can find it. Loner Box, and then uh, in the second row is Lumi Rue. She's a liberal, feminist woman, I think. And then me, yours truly, James Hake. I think the guy next to me is maybe LCTR fan. The woman in the bottom row is Riley G. Roshong. Another liberal, I think. Counterpoints. Counterpoints. Ever heard of counterpoints? Is the bottom in the middle. Eight pe- eight panelists, by the way. And then the last guy down lower right is uh, Brant for Liberty. I was listening to his stream. He was on Twitch. He's on Twitch. Uh, another conservative guy. So there's four conservative guys. You see in the uh, lower right, and then four libs and a liberal host. Interesting, huh? So thehakereport.com for the information on how to find it. Appearances. Go to appearances section. It's going to be on the Twitch. It's going to be streaming on twitch.tv slash Dylan Burns TV. Normal spelling of Dylan, normal spelling of Burns TV. We'll see what happens. 5 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Wow. Brutal. Have I ever been on a stream that long? Not that I know of. Vosh, defeated only by Hake, says uh, (laughs) Willie Palomino. Man, he's... Okay. Um, Quick point about uh, YouTube. You heard about YouTube. I mentioned it yesterday. YouTube earlier this week, according to the far-left female run outlet, The Skim, the company announced... They're hiding the thumbs down button count on videos. YouTube says the move is designed to protect creators from harassment or harassment and from dislike attacks. (laughs) Oh gosh, creators like the White House, meaning sleazy Joe Biden, protecting Joe Biden from uh, his unpopularity, (laughs) seemingly unpopular. Uh, And phony Fauci. When people team up to dislike videos and hurt its success. Uh, apparently concerned with the, with the change, people will be wondering, how, I, how do I know if a video is worth my time? There are people who do reviews, review videos. And if the review or, a, it, or an instructional video, if the instruction is not really good quality or misleading, then you don't know anymore because they dislike count, right? Viewers can still hit the dislike button, but only creators will see the exact count. 
The platform isn't the first to edit its features. Facebook and Instagram also played around with toning down their like button. What a mess, huh? I think Twitter is playing around with a dislike thing or something. And speaking of censorship, to protect the establishment, this representative Anthony Sabatini tweeted out, Big tech must be broken up, and he shared a censored tweet that stated, he stated yesterday, maybe it was a Facebook post, I don't, maybe, that Kyle Rittenhouse is, according to him, an American hero. And honestly, I, I kind of agree. He, he handled himself well, honorably. He showed tre- tremendous restraint. I was watching the video footage from a uh, real journalist, real video journalist, of that night when Kyle Jack Bauer, John Wick Rittenhouse, and I call him that because he did not hurt anybody innocent. He only hurt his attackers, and he didn't even hurt all of them. He fired some warning shots or maybe or just missed this guy who seemed like he was a black guy. He's unidentified who jumped, tried to jump kick him. And then right after uh, that Anthony Huber guy was trying to grab at his gun. And that's very ill advised, not wise at all. And he's dead now. Rest in peace. But he was he was accused of he was a liberal who was accused of so-called domestic violence. So maybe he was fighting with his girlfriend. If he has a girlfriend, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's more was even morally straight. But uh, Don Lemon was was over there on CNN. That liberal, not morally straight, black guy who hates Trump calls Trump a, a racist when he's the one who just hates white people. Don Lemon said the right is trying to say that you have a right to defend your town, your street, and your country. <laughs> Complaining about it. By the way, yesterday, it was, an, it was an awesome scene, I hear. At the Kyle Rittenhouse trial yesterday morning. You know, yesterday was Veterans Day. Yeah, Huber was not a Christian, by the way. For shame. And uh, this judge asked, given that it's Veterans Day, if there were any veterans in the room. According to a New York Times reporter, Nicholas bogle Burroughs. Hyphenated male name, wow. And uh, so he, he asked for a round of applause for the only apparent veteran, Kyle Rittenhouse's next witness, a use of force expert. <laughs> so the judge asked everyone in the court to applaud for the veterans. And I think, the, uh, I think that even the jury applauded for this veteran. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? That's why I love boomers. Don't you love boomers? You should. An evil person in the chat. Lights out is, is an evil person in the chat. He just comes up with the most ridiculous stuff. Says, John Wick never cried on the stand like a little piggy. Uh, at least you admit that he did indeed cry. John, you, John Wick is a fictional character, dummy. <laughs> and he was a grown adult adult. This one is an 18-year-old grown adult man, but still kind of young. I bet Jack Bauer might have cried if he were 18, his first kill, couple of kills, even if they did get what they asked for, right? Right. So, let me get to uh, Rick in Hampton, Virginia, calling early, calling on time. Isn't that nice? Rick in Hampton, Virginia, how are you doing? What's going on, James? My brother, what's going on with you? Not too much. Just having a fun, loosey-goosey Friday show. And two men will make a good um, prediction, man. All Carol right. Rittenhouse, I believe, will get on. Oh, well, uh, come close you to your to... phone, Rick. Oh, can you hear me now, Jane? What about now? I can hear you fine now. Okay. I make a prediction that Carol Rittenhouse will get on for the simple fact. You don't go for nobody's gun, man. You go for somebody's gun. As far as they train you on the military, somebody gets a gun, they're going to use it on you. They're going to give you a lead sandwich. Yeah. Or, I you mean, know you, I mean? Don't, you don't surrender your gun. That's, they don't have a right to steal your gun. Were you kidding me? Right. That's, that's why. They, that, that is they probably would have shot them. Yeah, so, that's why I think Ahmad Arbery was very wrong. Yeah, that's why he died for. Yeah. Because instead of him trying to talk to the people, what I would have been, that would have been me running. He didn't want to talk to him because he knew he was doing something wrong. 
Yeah. And so they stopped him. Interesting he point. Called, and um, Possible. the first thing he did was run and try and take that guy's gun. And he shot him because he got that gun. He shot him. He turned around and shot his father. Yeah, you know, there's no telling what somebody will do if they if you let them disarm you. It's ridiculous. Yeah. The police, they are talking to you deadly force if somebody trying to get their gun. You're right, because that's a deadly you know, threat. You know, they, they, may, they may not kill you. They may win. They may kill you. Right. I'm going to go find out. You don't out. know. You don't take that that's risk. Right. It's ridiculous. And people are acting and like he didn't have a right to carry. He did have a right to carry. I know that there is a law in the state of Wisconsin that claimed that you can't be 18 and possess a, a dangerous weapon or something like that. And a 19-year-old, a 19-year-old sold him the weapon, but he was clearly well trained. He knew what he was doing. He did not hurt anybody. He did not hurt himself in the handling of that weapon, even when he fell, and the gun didn't go off. That was. That's why I call him John Jack, John Wick Jack Bauer because that was awesome, honestly. I, I I'll tell you too, and, and then the left only they get to argue about why did his mother drop him off while he was rioting. <laughs> well, he had to go to work. <laughs> uh, Arian says the, Rittenhouse is guilty of being too dang based. <laughs> yeah, you know it's like, oh man. And, uh, and, and um, with the Oldbury case, if I was um, um, the defense, um, he, I mean, the defense lawyer, I wouldn't let the media know nothing. They wouldn't see my hand to the day of court. Oh, yeah. Because they put something out there. Um, cable Monsters News, CNN, going to twist it up and make it no good what they can use. And, um, he, um, oh, oh, but yeah, this don't spit that shot off, they're going to get off too. Because he shouldn't have tried to go, go for that man go. Right. Yeah, I agree, man. Your phone is getting a bit muffled, Rick. Stay close to your phone. Oh, oh, okay. I'm sorry, James. What about now, my brother? Much better. Appreciate that. Okay, yeah. That's, <laughs> now it's gone off again. <laughs> your f- oh, okay. Why well, well, not? Do you hear me? It just comes in and out, man. But but you got your oh, point okay. across, I think. Thank you, man. Yeah. I, was, I mean, what do you think will happen? I I predict that he will be acquitted or else they will declare a mistrial but i don't know what about the albury case oh with arbury oh man yeah i don't know i think that they may be convicted of stuff because the the claim is that uh the claim is that they had no business trying to conduct a citizen's arrest against him and chasing him and uh trapping him like that so i don't know if that's true or not i don't I, what are you supposed to do? So, yeah, he ma- went up to that man gun. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but the whole setup of that situation is what's a question mark in my mind. So those people are going to push and push and push, and accuse these whites of, of uh, all kinds of mess. I read a funny quote. I got to read this quote to you guys, regarding yeah. this. Um, oh man. Oh, here's this. Ba- Kevin Go, I pronounced it Goff in the Hake News, but somebody said I think his last name is pronounced Go, G O U G H. And I pronounced it Goff, but they say Go. He's a defense attorney for one of the three white men charged in the black jogger, Ahmad. I mean, blah, 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 blah. It was a self defense killing, in my opinion, like yours. But it was a botched citizen's arrest. This guy, Kevin Go, Go said, we don't want any more black pastors coming in here, referring, objecting to nationally rec- recognized civil rights leaders attending the trial, pretending to support the victim's family, as if this Ahmaud Arbery guy had a real family. What a, so what a they, mess. I don't blame him. Jesse Jackson can stay where he at. Yeah, Jesse and, uh, Jackson, Al Sharpton. Called, Ben Crump, all these sleazy, evil people. Well, Ben Crump is not a pastor, but all these fake black preachers, they're evil. Man, I was saying, too, like, um, the um, black community will get worse if they keep relying on the Democratic, the Democratic Party. Demon rats. And rely on these. Yeah, there you go, demon rats. <laughs> equal, we can use both of them, James. And, 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 and it's sad, man, it's not going to, matter of fact, we had a union meeting um, Tuesday. We were talking about from abortion, 
all the way to mandates and everything. And, man, I, I had one of the guys, like I said, I can't stand no white men to tell a woman what to do with her body. And, um, I, said, I wish more black men would stand up with them white guys and, tell, and, and, and um, be against abortion. Yeah. You know, and, um, and, and I can tell it was conflicted. I see what you're coming from, Ricky, but um, so many circumstances, I think even if a woman's ready, the people will come and encourage that woman and help the woman out. I think she would consider keeping a baby. There's been a lot of good testimony on kids that was born out of a rape. Right. You know, and... um. Yeah. And, and I know, I know a man... I know a man about my age who says that he was uh, a raped baby, but he supports abortion. But he, he turned into an angry atheist guy. But, yeah, according to him, he was a child of rape. But he should be happy to be alive. I think he, he it seems to enjoy his life. He's just kind of uh, blind a little bit. I used to think that way, too, about abortion. Well, it's her body, but once I understood what God was saying... And most people get, and most of these women that get abortion, they are for convenience. Most of the abortions are. I would say about 95, 96 percent of it is convenient. Right. It's not that their life is in danger, they are sick or nothing. They just use that to keep it um legal. Yeah. And my thing is, you know, I even say this: if it comes to abortion, why don't the people that want the abortion pay for it themselves? I know. It's so ridiculous. The, we had no. remember that Government remember that, uh, that that woman who wants uh, her birth control paid for Sandra Fluke, whom the great the late great Rush Limbaugh called a slut. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, she said she wanted the girl to pay for her birth control. Yeah, that was her whole Sandra speech. Fluke. I think shameful. So what? Well, oh, Blake used some. Well, if I can't have a voice, I want the government to pay for my birth control. Well, the government ain't having sex. If you want to have sex, you pay for it. Yeah. You know, it's like the liberals are most people are unaccountable. Right. Yep. And, and most liberals, to me, they don't have accountability. They, they're, I'm saying, oh, man, I'm telling you, man. Shit, it, 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 it's crazy, James. <laughs> it is crazy, my brother. Yeah. It's it's getting interesting, but I was I was just so glad to see us win Virginia, man. Nice, yeah, All I agree, right? Anyway, man, we just, I I appreciate it. I had to go. I got to keep moving, Rick. Well, do your thing, James. Thank you for having me on your show, man. And yeah. um, I will keep calling. But the good thing about it, man, you getting you getting hard to catch on, man, because you are getting popular, dude. Everybody's listening to the hate report now. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. You know, Have a good like weekend that. to you. You too. Love y'all. God bless y'all. Have a good weekend. All right. You as well. I'm going to start my uh, musical interlude a little early, guys. I have a, uh, a guest coming up in the second hour, and I want to give as much time as possible. But first, let me quickly get to Donning Armor in uh, California. What's up, Donning Armor? Hey, what's going on, James? Chilling. <laughs> Chilling like a villain. <laughs> oh, man. Why do we imitate the blacks? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it rhymes, it must be true, right? The, yeah. If the shoe, if it does not fit, you must acquit. <laughs> <laughs> if it's brown, flush it down. <laughs> if it's yellow, let it mellow. <laughs> yeah. What um, yeah, well, my question is... Uh, what is God? Because you know I'm an atheist. Right. Can you explain what God is to me? I cannot. That's a great question, though. Well, I, I cannot explain it. what it is to you. And uh, you might ask JLP this question. I think he may he know God more than I do. want to talk to me. <laughs> he does not? Uh, no, last time I called in, he, uh, abruptly hung up on me. Uh, I don't think he appreciates my questions, but... Did he ask, did I'm you ask this question, in, though? Uh, I didn't ask him this question. I asked him why he refuses or avoids discussing biological differences between races. Oh, he asked yeah. me if I was a Christian. Yeah, he asked me if I was a Christian. I said no, and then something to the effect of, oh, well, no wonder, click. <laughs> so, yeah, he, because so, he's but, not into, but, he's not because that's like intellectual stuff or stuff that 
he doesn't he doesn't read about IQ and things like that or or uh I mean he knows about the differing crime rates and he recognizes that white people built this country and we need to this is a this is whites made this country we can't have them be a a minority but he's not into the biology stuff he's into the spiritual stuff I, but I, I think I that he would be able to that, I would think he would give you a fair answer to what is god but you believe in god yes yeah. But you can't explain what God is at all? No, I'm stumped. I'm stumped. And I'm not saying that it's a bad question. It's a good question. I find that interesting. Yeah. But, so when you, uh, when you, um, I don't, I won't, don't want to say condemn, but. You can you go ahead. Just people, say it as, say it as you see it. You can, you can well, speak when you loosely. criticize people, yeah. when you criticize people for not believing in God, but yet you don't know what God is, it's it's a strange thing to do, is it not? It, it I can understand that it does seem strange. It seems kind of hypocritical for uh, phony Christians who don't know what they're talking about to go after the atheists for being arrogant and and also believing stuff that's not true. Yeah, I can I can see that. I say oh, no, that it's, I, well, it seems I, I don't like believe it, it seems sorry. to me that the atheists in general they they ha, they are arrogant and they're jumping to conclusions that just don't make any sense to jump to those conclusions. It's but you're right it's not good to uh to uh be half be lukewarm in your belief in God and to it's best to but, be how do you All believe in something that you can't define? You be- I think that you believe in a lot of... I mean, you live in a reality, and you can't define all of a reality, too. I mean, I, I don't have to be able to explain something just because... And, and not know that it's true. There's a lot of stuff that I know is true that I just instinctively go with that I can't define it. I don't... You don't, you don't, you you don't, you yourself, I don't believe, completely live by your intellect in a way that you can totally explain or define. Um, People aren't as intellectual or logical as you think. uh, There is truth in what you're saying, but can you define it at all? Um, I mean, I, I don't know about total definition. I'm just trying to get my bearings and understand at least somewhat what you are speaking about when you say God. Yeah. Well, I think that God created the world and us. If you look around at the world, it seems kind of obvious that that came from God and not a, not an accident, an accident, an accident. <laughs> to quote 121, remember that punk rock song with the female singer? Screamer? No. I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so the cr- creator and uh, sustainer of life, yeah. Can, can you say if it's like um, a, a being? I mean, you're a theist, right? You're a Christian, so you're, you're into theism. So is this a conscious creator? Yeah, I would say so. I think so. But I, that, that's getting into speculation, and, uh, and so I don't know for sure Okay, well, that's interesting. I just wanted to call in and try to, you know, understand a little bit more about uh, your beliefs. And I'll have to ponder it, man. I like this question. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, if you want to talk about it uh, some other time, we can certainly do that. Uh, I've never had anybody tell me what it exactly is, this God, but... All right. I don't want to put your chat room to sleep, so... (laughs) (laughs) Downing armor out. (laughs) All right, man. Nice to hear from you. Take care, man. All right. You too. All right. Guys, uh, I will get back. Well, (laughs) I will get back to calls, I think. I have a guest coming up. I have, like, this long song. My guest is in the wings. So let me play this uh, beautiful, amazing Grace song. In my opinion, there's a part of it that I'm not a big fan of. The the guitar goes, "Mm." and I just... uh, like too happy, Blech. but 
This is Suffering and the Hideous Thieves from the 2004 album Rats in Heaven out on Lujo Records, L-U-J-O Records. I think that means smooth, I'm not sure. Excellent record label, excellent band, Suffering and the Hideous Thieves, by, led by Jeff Suffering. Amazing Grace, yes, indeed, the hymn. Enjoy, and I'll be back with Fanatic, F-A-N-A-T-I. Q, the Twitch streamer. Cool, huh? He was on the Fallen State the other week. Enjoy Amazing Grace, and I'll be back.
Disturbing on the CD insert. Horrible, they all can't sing. <laughs> hey, this ain't Lincoln Park. I don't know, I feel like the long, the long songs like this, uh, I think there's like an intention to get into like the spirit of, you know what I mean? Right. I have Fanatic with me, guys. <laughs> Fanatic is my guest. And this is Suffering and the Hideous Thieves from the 2004 album. Rats in Heaven. That both, the, the album name is, is something interesting, and, and the, the artist name is ridiculous, too. What's, yeah. What's going on there? They're edgy Christians. Uh, apparently. He used to be a punk rock guy, the guy who's Jeff Suffering. Mm. Punk rock guy. 90 Pound Wuss was his band. Tooth and, ever heard of Tooth and Nail Records? No, no, I have not. Okay. I was into the Christian punk. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Fanatic, says Stinger GT2. I'm looking at the YouTube chat. I, I, I think Christian, Christian punk, Christian rap, all of them, they, they always, they don't, I don't know, it, it, it hits me different. It feels <laughs> like you're trying your best to hold on to something while trying to do something else. You know? Yeah, cling to the world and God. Yeah, kind of stuff. it feels a little weird. I mean, it's not that, not that you can't do Christian rap, it just yeah. a lot of times the delivery comes off that way. Fanatic himself is a... Uh, is a musician and a, and a Christian, right? Yep, both. Yeah, Fanatic was on The Fallen State a couple weeks back with Jesse Lee Peterson. October 27th, I believe, was when the episode came out. Mm -hmm. A Twitch, Twitch streamer, musical artist. Yep. Uh, we got Jesse Lee to agree to reparations in some ways. <laughs> did you? I sure did. It felt... Amazing. It felt like the win of the century. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Fanatic with a Q at the end instead yes. of a C. Yeah. Disambiguation. Nice. I just thought it was cool as a kid. Like, you know, just all oh, spell it different. People always spell things different. <laughs> and then when I got older, I realized, man, this is so beneficial because there's so much to look me up. So when Google. Find it. Right. Very yeah. true. Turn off the music. <laughs> We got like three, four more minutes left. Three more minutes, guys. You can hang. You can hang. <laughs> Actually, the ending of this song is my favorite part of it because I don't like the epic stuff. Mm -hmm. I like it when it's like calm and quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I, I think I have some pretty long songs, actually. Uh, You're a pianist? Mm -hmm. You play piano? Yeah. Do you sing as well? I'm starting to sing. Okay. Uh, I just didn't. I didn't like to sing forever. Just uh, I have like singers in my family who are like singer singers, and uh, I just didn't like them being better than me. So I was like, you know, I'll stick to the keys. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm insanely competitive. Actually. Nice. Um, but yeah, I've started to sing late. Like lately, uh, my next project, I'll actually be singing. On. Cool. Yeah. Uh, Nick, our producer, Jesse's producer. He looked up your Spotify and he's like, oh yeah, you, you, you weren't kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do music. That's um, cool. But I think, like, as a producer, like, that stuff is cool. But I think uh, the place where I shine the most is in accompaniment. Like, if, if there's a singer and I'm able to play for the singer, yeah, uh, I don't think anything's better than that. And, um, I, yeah, it's, it's pretty insane. Um, because I feel like it, it kind of allows you to do, to move freely on the keyboard, do whatever you want to do, yeah. and someone else is carrying the melody, so it just allows you to, like, nice. total freedom. And I think that's where I shine the most. You guys able to hear us over the music, guys? Press one if you can hear us fine. Press two if the music's too loud. Press three if the music's too quiet. <laughs> oh, thank you. Lower the music a little, Chris. I mean, Nick says. Thank you. Um. 
yeah I, you know i think yeah i i i i guess um when i was on jesse's show i feel like i was um very much cause, you know how, like you can be you can have you uh, you almost have like an alter ego. For myself, I feel like I have an alter ego, right? Like, so there's like a fanatic mode where I'm like kind of a lot more cantankerous, a lot more energetic. And then I feel like with Jesse, I was more just kind of just chill and just having a conversation with the person. I never know what energy people expect. Like when I go on panels on Twitch, yeah. and they want fanatic. When you're on a that. panel, are you talking politics and stuff? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, but then it's it's really aggressive. Uh, right. And as I said, cantankerous. It's just because uh, I don't know if people want blood sports. Right. They don't really want a conversation. <laughs> True. I feel like that's a lot of politics, to be honest. Yeah. So it's all a show, huh? Yeah, more so. Cut out the crap music, says Jim Justice. <laughs> music way too, four, music way too long. This is Jeff Suffering singing right now. Jeff mm. Suffering. And he was a Christian. You ever heard of Mars Hill Church? No. They were up in Seattle, Washington. There was this famous guy who sent, wrote this book about sex and marriage. He was into masculinity a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Jesse, Jesse Lee had him on his show, and he hung up, ended up running off. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, I saw, um, uh, I just recently watched his conversation with Gino, I think Jennings. Oh, yeah, on The Fallen State. Yeah, Pastor was... Gino Jennings, another passionate pastor yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that guy is something else it's pretty good pretty entertaining um i don't know how serious i can take him but he's it's good so introduce yourself to the uh listeners um my name is fanatic spelled with a q f-a-n-a-t-i-q um i'm a musician first a twitch streamer and you know political pundit for some um I was a professional video gamer for quite a few years. I still play video games, but just not professionally and not consistently anymore. Um, yeah, and that music is my trade, and um, I would say, uh, uh, yeah, I would say politics has become like my newest passion. It's nice, man. Uh, you guys can call in 888-775-3773. Oh. <laughs> if you want to talk to, uh, there it is. If you want to talk with... Fanatic. I have to point. I have to point in front. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys, I have a guest. I like Gino Jennings. Nice guy, says Stinger GT2. So, I saw you on the Fallen State mm -hmm. with Jesse Lee Peterson, and and then I looked you up on your Twitter, mm -hmm. and I saw you tweet in response to your conversation with Jesse Lee on the Fallen State. It came mm -hmm. out a couple weeks ago. That. Um, as a Christian, you continue to sin, or you no, you do wasn't. sin after becoming a, a born again Christian. Well, sure. Uh, I guess it's a. I feel like it's a bit of a reductive way of saying it. But basically, <laughs> what it what it boils down to, it's this belief that um, the idea that some sort of way that after converting, right after becoming a Christian, that for the rest of your life you will never sin again. Um, I think that's kind of unrealistic. I don't think it's practical, and I feel like. Um, for most Christians, or I would say all, or all honest Christians anyway, you'll find that there's this constant war with um, the sin nature that we were literally born with. I guess some people refer to that as the Adamic nature and this new nature, which is of God, in which we are to live as free from sin as possible. And so I, I think like to, to make this idea that like we, we just never, ever, ever sin, um, when a sin can be something like a bad attitude, um, I, I would say that that seems unrealistic and impractical for Christianity. I um, have seen in the Bible, and I've presented that verse to you from 1 John 3, mm -hmm. that says anyone who is born of God cannot sin. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to that? Well, I, I, man, I wish I had the Bible on me right now to kind of read the surrounding context. Um, but I'll I would pull it up. Okay, you or you would. can pull it up. Okay, I, I can find it on my phone. <laughs> I know. Um, I, I think, uh, yeah, it, it would seem almost ridiculous because then we like look at situations like um, where Peter. Peter was clearly born again. He was, you know, a Christian. He at was, what point? Um, at the at the point of the crucifixion. Okay. He was a disciple. He was clearly like he was a Christian. He had like literally cast out demons in Jesus' name. Um, he had gone and been doing the actual works of Jesus, and then he denies Jesus three times. 
And that was a sin? Do you not? He, he literally lied. It is a lie. It, it, is it lying a it, sin? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong. And it's wrong to deny Jesus. You think that he was born again already at that point? Sure. Uh, people uh, can people cast out demons, and some of the demons caught on that this, is a, this was a faker. It happened in the Bible. There was mm-hmm. like a faker sure. who was casting out some demons, and then other ones, demons like, Paul I've I know, this guy, so-and-so I know, but, but who, who are, are you? you? And then they jumped him. Mm-hmm. So that guy wasn't born again. He didn't actually cast out that demon, number one. Right, uh, but he, he might have cast out other demons. I, I don't know if there, there's no scriptural evidence that he passed that he casted out other, other demons. Um, but I, I do know the story that you're referencing, and it was where people tried to cast out the demon. They didn't actually have Jesus Christ as part of them. And yeah. So they were unsuccessful because it's not from any of our own power that we would ever do anything like that. That would only come from Jesus Christ, right? Because there is uh, there is a reference in the Bible that talks about if I speak in tongues of men and angels. Mm-hmm but have no love. If I surrender everything I have and give to the poor and all that, surrender my body to the flames, but have no love, I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. So there's all these things that you can do that Peter may have done before. Just for clarity on that scripture even, where he says, though I speak with the tongues of angels and so on and so forth, but have not charity, it's not him basically saying, these are things that I do and don't have charity. He was saying, if I do these things. Basically, it was an an analogy of basically saying, like, if I was able to do these things and still didn't have charity, then it would be nothing. If I was able to do these things, it's more like him postulating these possibilities because, one, this was Paul speaking, and the idea that Paul, like one of the greatest apostles, literally referred to himself in some ways as the greatest apostle. Apostle. The fact that like he would be saying, I don't have love so, or I don't have charity sounds unrealistic. So it's clearly I'm more just talking of, about it. That statement indicates that it's possible to be able to do all kinds of great things and not. No, he was he was basically saying if I was doing all of these things, but didn't have these, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't matter. It'd be like me right. saying if I claim to be a Christian and have love, but then don't love my brethren, then that's not real Christianity. That's not saying you don't take that to say literally I'm saying I don't have love. I wasn't I saying Paul was saying that he didn't have love. I was saying that he was the one who wrote that can, verse. I know, but he was saying if I don't, if I do that and don't have love, just like any a lot of people do good things, a lot of people. Uh, like, people think that they're born again because they quit drinking and smoking and all that stuff. Oh, sure. But there's a lot of secular atheist people quitting drinking and smoking, too. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean that they're... doesn't mean it. Sure, we're not saved by our works. So, yeah. So that's that's the point that he was making. Well, sure, but I wouldn't just say it was only the works that I would be referring to. I would say that he was literally dubbed a disciple by Jesus, right? And he was literally sent on the Great Commission, actually carried out, like, all sorts of works. Came Later back on, to, yeah. No, 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 this is, this is before he ended up telling those lies. Because okay. well, there, remember when Jesus sent out all of his disciples and said, you're going to go to these nations, and if these people don't accept you, shake off the dust from your feet and so on right. and so forth. And then they came back to Jesus Christ and they said, hey, we cast out demons. We did all these things in your name. And he says, um, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven, right, in response to that. And it clearly in, the, in those scriptures, these disciples had gone out and done miracles and things and, and emulated, I would say, or whatever word you want, would like to use, the works of Jesus Christ in those situations. After having performed those works at the behest of Jesus Christ, Peter then goes later on and, and ends up... Um, but you just Jesus. admitted that the works aren't what saves you. Sure, it's not. It, so I you would don't say know it's, exactly when Peter was actually born again. I would say accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is what is what makes you... And and G, and Peter was the one who specifically said, Thou art... Um, right. You're the, you're, you're, you're the Christ. And Jesus said, yeah. Flesh has not told you, but Spirit has, right? Nice. So clearly, like... He knew stuff. He, yeah, he, he, not only he, starting to he, see. he literally walked with he, him, yeah. he, <laughs> God had already given him a new name and said, thou art Cephas, and what was it, thou art Cephas, and on this rock I will build my church. Right. So he had already, like... Uh, you know the King James Version, that's cool. Sure, that's that's what I was raised on. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, clearly, like, he, he, had, he had, Cephas was interpreted as stone, right? But like, clear, like right. there was all of these, like, again, it's not just works, it was, it was... The Spirit had obviously shown itself in the fact that Jesus was able to do that. Like, J- Jesus was able to recognize it. Like, how, all of their relationship, um, him having accepted Jesus and being a disciple, and leaving his fishing and going to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah. There's so many different things that I would say that would be a reference to the fact that he was clearly a Christian. Well, clearly a th- born-again Christian. There's, I mean, I think most people, I think the Bible is a reference, is a 
written to, like these letters, the mm -hmm. New Testament letters, were written to both people who were born again and people who were, who saw that it was the truth and wanted it, but didn't quite have it. Mm -hmm. Sure. That's why it said, I, I write these things so that you do not sin, but if you do sin, we have somebody who can uh, save you from that, mm -hmm. and then so you will no longer sin. Sure. <laughs> Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. So, but you you do agree then with, with the statement that I originally made that the Bible clearly does say. Now I know the scriptures, First John one and eight, that if we say we have no sin, then we we, we yeah because we you have to ourselves. repent, right? Okay, but but it's not the same thing as saying if we have not sinned, because in that same verse, it later on goes on to say if we say we have not sinned. Yeah. So clearly, when it's saying if we say we have no sin, it means that we currently have no sin whatsoever within us at all. But you're making that making assumption. Ourselves. I think you're making that assumption because isn't that dictated by like the language itself? Not necessarily, because later on in that same book is the one that I said, anyone who sins does has neither seen God nor known Him. No one who's who's born of God sins. No one who's born of God sins, they cannot sin. Okay. And I, that language is quite clear. I sure, I, 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 um, let me, I guess maybe we should go ahead and pull it up. Well, where this was that one first, more time? This is First John 3, so we read the whole thing. Mm. Uh, what manner of love God's bestowed on us, and this is King James Version, but I'm reading it more like common English. Mm -hmm. I do the same. Uh, that we should be called sons of God. The world doesn't know one know us because it doesn't know him. That's why they reject Trump, too, and JLP. <laughs> Beloved, now we are sons of God, and it does not appear what we will be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as he is pure. Whoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. Whoever sins has not seen him nor known him. Little children, no, let no man deceive you. He who does what's righteous is righteous, and he is also as he is righteous. Oh, yeah. He, so, is, he, is, who, he, who, is, he who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil's been sinning from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Mm -hmm. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither is he who does not love his brother. What a nice message, huh? Absolutely. Um, so I would say my response to that is really simple. There's so many scriptures throughout the entire Bible, especially in the New Testament, that specifically dictate like a clear delineation between um, faith, um, between grace, and between the law, right? Like the, how many scriptures are there that talk about the fact that like the law is not perfect and that um, we are not under the law and so on and so forth. And yeah. here this scripture is clearly dictating that any person who in order to be, uh, sin is transgression of the law. And if we are not under the law, but under grace, then it's impossible for us to sin because at this point we are, sin is transgression of the law and the law was the Old Testament and grace is the New Testament. Does that make sense? I didn't follow. I didn't follow what your point is. Which, what's the bottom line point of that? The bottom line we is we can that, still sin after being born again, well, or we cannot. Well, if you're born <laughs> again, then you're no longer under the law, and so then therefore you cannot sin. Okay, nice, huh? So then you agree with us? Sure, but hold on. <laughs> uh, so, but then there's a few things, right? So, for example, uh, when I asked Jesse Lee if fornication was a sin, he disagreed with that. Do you disagree with that too? I I don't know it because it's interesting. What is sin? Like in the in the isn't it Romans seven where Paul says I don't know under, understand what I do, mm -hmm. and then he says, now if I do what I would not do, it's no more I who do it, but sin living in me that does it. Mm -hmm. So it seems like sin is not what we think it is. Sin is not the actions, it's sin is the, some, the evil living inside of us that produces the evil actions. Oh sure, sins in the heart. It's not an action. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a willful or it's it's mm, mm, sure. It's it's a transgression. It's a it's a heart thing, right? Like yeah. I mean, and I guess this is a bit of an Old Testament reference, but I think it was with uh, David. Was it David? 
where it was like they were looking at his like older ruddier brothers and then but god looked at the heart and saw that david was more fit to be the nice. king right yeah so like it's it's a lot of times um but then the bible also says the heart is like twisted and evil and who can know it right right um so then in reality a lot of times sin is going to be something that comes from inside right like how the, you know the bible says nothing entering into a man can defile him but only that which proceeds out right? yeah and so i i would say that sin is transgression of the law but i would say um, I guess that's this reference here, but I would say like it's, it's, there's a lot more that encompasses it, right? Because the Bible also says, "He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin." Right? Uh -huh. So then it wouldn't that wouldn't be necessarily a transgression. It's just a person that knows that they should be doing something and choosing not to do that. That'd be like a sin by oh, sin of omission, right? As opposed as opposed to like a sin of commission. <laughs> yeah. So I think there's 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 a lot, and it's it. The thing about the Bible and what makes it so interesting and so important is that it's really easy to look at individual verses and tr try to get lost, right? But no scriptures of any of, of any private interpretation, right? We have to be able to look at these things and try to read the whole Bible and try to understand it completely. And then that way we can find where like it, scriptures can interpret other scriptures to where we get a more sound understanding of what exactly is happening. Yeah, I don't think we... It's I don't know if it's wise to try to understand it because people try to understand stuff and then they end up interpreting it all wrong. And people like will say, well, in practice, like what you said, no honest Christian will will say that he doesn't sin. Mm -hmm. or some, so you said something to that effect. Mm -hmm. Because you, when you look around, the the people are just a bunch of lost people still. But that and was that the same in Jesus' mean, day, too. That doesn't mean that, uh, that doesn't prove the Bible wrong about Christians no longer sinning. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't, I would never try to choose the Bible or try to use, like, experience, the, yeah, people's experience. experiences to, to tell what, whether the Bible is true or, or whatever. The Bible is the absolute authority. The Bible is the only thing that I say is 100% true that I have no doubt in whatsoever. There are no errors. Uh, I have you know, a caller for you on this. Go ahead. Let me, uh, D Dr. ADD is on the line. Cool name. <laughs> ADD. I think he's on Twitch, too, by the way. What's up, Dr. ADD hey. from uh, California? How's it going? Going How's well. Going, man? You're on with Fanatic, Twitch streamer awesome. and hey, musician. I wanted to ask, uh, uh, do you believe the Bible or do you believe in the Bible? Um, can you explain to me for, how is this those? Is this for me or for the for the guest or both? Uh, it's for the guest because I asked okay. you last time and then you can arm me about it. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, um, I, 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 can you explain to me how those things are distinct? I, I seem like those are the same statement. Maybe I'm missing. Believing the Bible versus believing in the Bible. Yeah. What is what is what do those things mean to you? Well, well, basically, do you believe everything written in the Bible, or are you more? altruistic and you believe that the bible uh can be right but people misinterpret things you know what i mean well i, I don't know if that'd be altruism but i would say that i definitely believe that the bible is true right um but i believe that there are things that are clearly not literal like that are like allegories and things that should be interpreted um that are you know um like yeah, like allegories are not literal. So then, I, I, but I I do believe that the Bible is the word of God. I believe that the Bible is true. I accept it as the authority, and you know, so all of those things. Okay. I have a lot of super chats to read from uh, old super chats too, man. <laughs> well, thank you, Doctor Add. Anything else? Um. Well, no. I was just wondering. You know, it, it, it's interesting to. Uh, see people's point of view on the Bible and, and, and where they actually get what they believe in from. You know what I mean? Right. Um, There's a lot of people no, who no, think no, that no. it's... People, people yeah, that believe it's, in the Bible as though they, you know? they think that they're believing in God, <laughs> and then they just believe yeah. their, their own interpretation, messed up interpretation of the Bible. But, but doesn't the scripture right. say in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God? Where they get it into says that, but it's, it's not saying in the beginning was the Bible. Right. Hmm? It says right. in the well, beginning. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you, you Dr. Oh, ADD. Appreciate you. it. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Uh, man. Um, interesting. Do you want to follow up on that? Well, sure. It's like, okay, so I don't know what to believe in the Bible necessarily means. Um, 
I, I don't I don't know believing that in the Bible is is you're treating the Bible like it's God right rather than believing in God because you'll notice that a lot of people um, who tout the Bible don't actually live by it they continue to sin this many of them are will say they'll say all kinds of crazy stuff that the Bible doesn't even say about itself Mm, yes. They'll call it the word of God, which it doesn't call itself that. They'll say Christians, I sin every day. Some there's some Christians out there, yeah. I, say I sin every day. I, you know, so, so my thing is, I, I recognize that other people. Wow, it's hard because I believe God is going to hold you to all that you know and understand. And I think that there are some people who haven't like fully learned and and fully understood exactly what the Bible is supposed to be and exactly how the transformation is going to happen. I'll give you an example. I have a, uh, my grandmother. Um, resting in heaven. Um, Speak up a bit for me. Okay. So I have a grandmother resting in heaven, and three years ago, I would say, uh, she passed. But when she first converted to Christianity, um, she smoked cigarettes and didn't know that smoking cigarettes was wrong. Um, and it, was until, it wasn't until later that God eventually convicted her on that, and she felt the need to cast that away, and she did. Um, but this same person, God answered her prayers more so than any person that I've ever seen in my entire life. It was insane. It just seemed like she could pray and God would instantly answer. Um, you know, she, he performed miracles on her body, health miracles, and she just had such a close connection with God. But then there were things that maybe at the, in the beginning of her salvation that she didn't understand. That didn't mean that she wasn't saved. And I don't believe that if she would have died at that point, she wouldn't have gone to heaven. It's not like you get saved or you convert to Christianity and you instantly know the full breadth and width of the Bible. It's, right. It doesn't work that way. So I think people are at different stages of learning and they're going to have to learn. Like the Bible tells you, come as you are. So it's not like you're going to instantly transform into something new the second you become a Christian. Um, it's just it's you are responsible for continuing to study the Bible, for continuing to learn and continuing to apply the precepts and the laws of the Bible towards yourself. How do you know that your grandmother is in heaven? Um, I guess those things are impossible to know, but it says how will you know that people are saved and just by their fruits you'll know them, right? And I don't know that they're necessarily in heaven. I'm still undecided on whether people go directly to heaven or whether they're in paradise or some, you know, some other um, place in between. But I would say um, we, we do know that you know, by your fruits you'll know them, and by her fruits she was Christian through and through. Um, All right. And so that's how I would assume that she's probably on the, on the right track. I have a super chat from uh, Stephen Absolution over there on streamlabs.com slash the Hague Report. Says, uh, question for, <laughs> he calls you fanatic. Well, he spelled it inter interestingly. He spelled it with fun. Mm -hmm. uh, are you saying the Bible contradicts itself? Because it clearly says in 1 John that you don't sin once you are born of God. I don't believe the Bible ever contradicts itself. I feel like if there's ever a point where you feel that the Bible is contradicting itself, I think then that means that one of those interpretations of one of those scriptures is wrong. I don't think the Bible ever contradicts itself. All right. Uh, let me just double check the super chats here. Okay. Guys, I'm going to have to read your super chats a little bit later. I'll try to read the ones that apply for the guest. But I will read your super chats. I appreciate them, guys. Um... Man, let me quickly get to, let me switch over topics a little bit. You're living in California. Mm -hmm. I have a caller, Ben, in Maryland, who has a question for us Californians. Ben, how are you doing? Hey, what's up, James? Hey. Uh, James and uh, Fanatic. Hey. Fanatic. Fanatic. Yep. Amazing. So my question was basically in relation to, uh, you know, how you, both of you are living in L.A., right? Yes. Well, I live yeah, in L.A. He, he, I don't know exactly where he lives, but he's in, in California. Yeah, so I'll, I'll still live yeah, in Los Angeles County. still live in the, what's it called, the Golden State, as his nickname? Oh, yeah. Sure, best state in the union. That's Correct. right. So I, I, I don't know. I, you guys genuinely want to keep on living there after seeing the turmoil that's happening politically and culturally over there? Yes. Which turmoil? <laughs> well, I mean... Have you not, did you not see the... Uh, you're ref are you referring to the Black Lives Matter riots, for example? Well, I mean, or the not, not even just, shutdowns, not, or what? Not even just that, but homelessness. You, you know, all, yeah, the the dookie on the street supposedly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So I would say that. 
part of these problems. I, I love it because it's one of those situations where uh, what happens is we look at legislation, we pass legislation and then ignore that legislation. And then as those problems come to roost, we kind of like blame, blame whoever's in power at the time. So when um, there were federal mandates that like kind of gotten rid of all of these, um, you know, uh, insane, um, asylums for for mental health and things like that all right that was passed during reagan's era right he got rid of all those things that used to be federally done and so then there was always a place that you could you would have for homeless i mean for for mental mental health people and and um, even addictions and things like that we got rid of those things and then we said we'll leave the states to decide and certain states like california did really good by those policies and tried to do their best to take care of their homeless other states some of the red states like texas decided eh, we're not really going to deal with this problem and it'll whatever the f- federal government's not doing it, and we're not either. So then when their problems began to balloon, they began shipping some of their homeless over to places like California, where now we are we don't have the resources adequate to deal with the, some of the problems that have to deal with all of the various states. Are you blaming Texas for our homelessness No, not crisis? Texas. A, 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 a copious <laughs> amount of red states. You're blaming the red states for the uh, the politicians here in, in all up and down the West Coast allowing their cities to go to hell. So uh, I don't think that California is going to have the resources to deal with the homeless problems from various other states. I don't think You're that's possible. You're literally blaming that. <laughs> sure. It doesn't make any sense, man. Does it not? No, it does not. So then tell when me. When did this happen? Uh, I think the, the, the Reagan thing happened in 1981. And this thing has spiked since Garcetti got in office. So like 2013. I've been working here at Bond since tw- late 2013, mm-hmm. and I've seen the homelessness just balloon out of control. I think somebody is not taking responsibility for stuff right now. I wish we had the numbers to be able to track this thing, but I, I really can't like defer to just your personal observations. It doesn't do anything for me data-wise. You haven't seen? You, you can't see for yourself that the homelessness has gotten out of control in the past several years? I feel like I've seen Way it. more out of control in the last several years than... There's then, uh, probably been an increase, but I think there's been a problem. Probably. With, pro- I, well, I don't. Uh, there's definitely. There's always been a gradual increase since 1981. No, this it's, is not gradual. This is ballooned. Well, I don't know. Do we have numbers to support that? I don't have to have numbers. I can see for myself that well, it's out of control. If you like, if you feel comfortable leaning to your personal observation, that's your. Power. Everybody I can can't see it. Do it. Everybody can see it. Sure. It's not just my. Per- it's not just me talking. So how do we know that this isn't a problem that's just being highlighted, such that it looks a, a lot more problematic because than it I see it is. everywhere, everywhere. I see it right on this corner. I see it in front of our building. Have you ever heard of something called selection and, bias? And then confirmation everybody bias? else. And everybody else is talking about it. Sure. Have you ever heard of something called confirmation bias? I've heard of it. Is it possible that could be in any way, shape, or form related to this homeless problem that you're identifying? Explain what okay. you're even talking about. Confirmation bias is the thing where, because of the fact that you're, starting, I know what it is. Okay. But, well, that's I'm explaining it just so, yeah. so, so everyone else can as well. It's where you're looking at something and you're looking for specifically a problem because it's something that's been brought to your attention. And now, as you begin looking for that thing, you start to see it a lot more because you're actively looking for it. And so then, as a result of that, you start to see the problem as something that's significantly more prevalent than it might actually be. Now, I don't have the actual numbers to know whether or not this thing is the case or not. I'm not putting my horse in that race until I have some sort of data. Or or something to you go don't know off that of. there's a homelessness crisis going on. I know that there is a there's all there's been a homeless crisis since uh, again since I can remember. I didn't I I don't, you don't know, know that it's way worse today than it's ever. I been. don't have any data to be able to help me know that. You shouldn't rely on data. You should rely on what, what you see around you. Oh yeah, we just we 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 think differently. No man, you, that's why you're a liberal, huh? I'm not a liberal at all. You just call yourself a progressive conservative. Sure. That's a liberal. So you're leaning towards the progressive portion and ignoring the conservative part? Yes. Oh, okay. That's... Because you don't believe in the... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Because you, you need data to see what you see in front of you. You have a confirmation bias to blame red states for something that's clearly... Uh, mismanagement here. So do you think that the red states, that, or not just red states, because the first thing that I blame, I think the, the, the chief blame Reagan? there was Reagan oh, and gosh. getting rid of the asylums. Do you think that that has no effects on the homeless problem that we're experiencing today? I, I have no idea. It's it's possible. Okay. There's, but there are ways to handle it. R- sure. Reagan isn't the only, Reagan's been gone a long time. Sure. Men could have stepped in and handled these things like men bef- since then. Do, do, I don't. I don't know that framing. Is you don't know that. Weird. No, well, I, I, How is it weird to say that men should have stepped in and handled these things like men? Well, what do you think men were doing before when the federal um, programs were in that were allowing for like a men to were be not funded? feeling sorry for fake victims in the past. That's why we were tougher on crime, and that's how we 
part of how we got the crime down because crime was like out of control when in the during the crack epidemic in the 80s 90s mm-hmm. and you think it was toughness on crime that had a lot to do with that it had a lot to do with it three strikes laws and all that stuff so then why did we see similar like decreases in crime in places that like didn't have some of those policies like in australia i don't know why was why did we see that same sort of problem? But you're like just you're just muddying the, the water. You're no, just no, 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 I'm not. It's yeah, not muddying are. the world. It, it, I mean, it's not muddying the water. It's looking at it's 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 you trying to assign a specific thing to the cessation of some problem, such as crime, in this scenario when we can see that thing happened literally all around the world in places that didn't employ or employ our harsh uh, sentencing. I don't know prison. if the, if what you're saying is true. There's a whole lot of it is. You're making the claim, but I don't can't, we, we can't believe you because you're just making a claim. Sure, I guess that, so this is why you would need data. And then, you, you and then data. there's a whole lot of data people who have an agenda. They don't look at, they don't look at, you know this to be true. Well, Liberals lie. Okay, so, and intellectuals so, lie. Academics so do, lie. So do conservatives. You want to say that Republicans don't lie? Yeah, Republicans lie. Most Republicans are liberals too. Oh, so then what do you mean by liberal? Then? Liberals are, tend to be uh, intellectuals, and intellectuals tend to be more like socialist, progressive. Wait, you they can't be an intellectual and yeah, conservative? Yeah, I mean, look at Einstein, he was too. Yeah, Einstein too. What? Yeah, Ben's still on the line. Sorry <laughs> about that, Ben. We've been having this Yeah, I was just here hearing everything. Uh, fanatic. Uh, What's up? Go ahead, Fanatic's ben. audio kind of low. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm just not. You got to speak up. I'm trying. I'm not used to hearing myself this clearly, but okay. I'll try my best to raise my voice a little bit. Um, Do you not, do you not think, so Republicans lie, right? Like they came up with the idea like alternative facts. That was them. That's not a lie. Alternative facts bring to light stuff that, because the liberals like to selectively grab facts. For example, you, you grabbed something about what Reagan did Mm -hmm. and they're trying to blame him when there's a whole lot of men who could have handled this situation like men. Sure. But you're just saying Reagan. Yeah, they could have they could have adjusted because of the error in removing that thing and figure out. Because there's a whole lot of error in in uh, enabling these people. Enabling who? Just the homeless in general? The the homelessness, the criminals and all that. What do you wait? Hold on. Those are two different things. Now, a homeless person is not necessarily a criminal and a criminal is not necessarily homeless. So what? what, I wasn't saying that they were, but they they often are. Well, I, I mean. They can be, but now we're conflating different things. And, cr- and crime, because we were talking about homelessness, and then we started to talk about crime. Okay, so then the things that we asked for in order to adjust things like and address... Australia is a mess right now. Oh. I wouldn't bring Australia as like a good... Wait, are you talking about like post-coronavirus? Anyway. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> uh, the things we we, we we talk about things like crime, and we've talked about preventative measures for crime, like when the crack e- epidemic was happening, we were asking for more preventative measures, better um, uh, economic opportunities, right? We were asking for all of these things, and it seemed like the only response we got was harsher, pr- harsher. Uh, prison sentences. We saw things like getting rid of the Pell Grant for prison for prisoners when we could see like numerically there was a dramatic difference between people who received the Pell Grant and their recidivism rates versus the people who didn't. But we still were real willing to take away the Pell Grant from these individuals. So in that case, it seemed like pr- crime wasn't the main focus there. We didn't care about their potential uh, continued criminality once they got out of prison because we removed that Pell Grant in light of that data. Right. So it doesn't seem like cr- uh, crime prevention nor does it is there any data what the pell grant is oh pell grant is a thing that allows uh it's for college so when you want to get into school it's a a grant that the government so like somebody who's somebody who's getting out of prison may get a pell grant to go to college afterwards no 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 no. pell grant is just given to all americans and it used to be given to prisoners as well um and it's not for your entire tuition it's just for a portion of it and we saw that prisoners who were able to access the pell grant had like a significantly different recidivism rate than their non pell grant receiving counterparts what is it what does it mean to be able to access that were they better behaved in the first place? Well, they no, actually wanted to get better? It was they just, wanted it, this? It, it was just something that was given. You, you could do it if you chose to go to school. You had the Pell Grant. And then, so they and then chose to, to go to school because they wanted to go. They while were, they were in prison. There's like better behaved criminals and there's like less better behaved. Sure, they, but we're talking about prisoners. Right. So people in prison right. who wanted to go to school, the Pell Grant was like part of a necessary thing to help fund their schooling such that they could get an education. But that's begging the question. It's the type of person who, a lot, there's a lot of well-behaved People who commit crimes and then they go to college. Ben, what was your? Did you have any follow up? Yeah, basically, I was asking that you guys basically claim to you still want to stay there. Yes, sure. And the uh, OG Golden State. 
Mm-hmm. But what's the reasoning as to why when it seems like it's a sinking ship? You know what I mean? It's the best state in the union. That's why. Right. Like, I mean, obviously, our population is the highest in the nation for a reason. Right. It's not like we're the biggest state by land size. Um, the but, best state. How? What's what makes it the best? So there's two. There's a bunch of things. Right. Some of these things are going to oh, be more. By the way, let me others. interrupt you briefly. Dr. ADD says I got the Pell Grant and Dr. ADD. I'm sorry, man, to out you. But it came out the other day. He's a loser. Oh. Pell Grant is not good. Wait, wait. <laughs> Fact, proof. <laughs> All right, uh, but anyway, you were saying the best okay. state in the union. <laughs> well, that's some logic. Listen, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's the best state because uh, when our weather is like literally the best in the union, I think so. Right? This, that's obviously going to be subjective. Um, yes, but yeah, I that's think a our, fact. Yeah, it, it's our, our weather is like literally the best in the union. Um, I say that. Um, we have just more amenities in other states, right? Like, so we obviously have like Hollywood, we have our beaches, um, we have just all of the different landscapes and the, the, the mountains, everything, right? Like this state is full of everything. Um, uh, so, so, so it's not the liberal politics that makes it the best state in the union. Not necessarily. No, I don't think so. I wouldn't say it's the politics that makes yeah. it the best. But I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that Texas is a better state because they have like conservative politics. Okay. Anything else, Ben? Yeah, hey, how about you, A? Oh, yeah, I, I agree on the physical level. It's a beautiful state, and I say we stay here and fight it out and take it back and ship out these homelessness, homeless people back to Texas and, um, and Quote, get unquote, back to Texas. Yeah, or wherever they came from. <laughs> but I don't think they came from Texas or the red states. or the, uh, Anyway, thank you, Ben. Appreciate it, man. Next time, in it. All right. Take care. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, do you have anything you want to ask me before I get back to calls or say to me or anything? No. No, not really. Oh. So wait, wait, hold on. Just, I'm sorry. This is going to be back to the original topic, it. and it's just for a small foray, yes. right? Um, there's a scripture that specifically says a person that fornicates sins against his own body. Yeah. So then at that point, fornication would be a sin, right? But you just said that the heart is what, the, the evil heart is that motivates the fornication is the sin. So it's like, the, it seems to be that the sin, the word sin is used in, in different ways and it means different things. Like sin is the evil inside you that causes you to do the wrong. Mm-hmm. And the action is sometimes called the sin. Mm-hmm. So to me, I don't, I don't, it's unclear. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't say that, I would say a Christian wouldn't fornicate though. Okay. Yeah, that's for sure. All right. <laughs> um, let me get to William in California. He wants to get on you in this homelessness thing. William. Hey, hi- hey. good morning. How you doing, man? Fine, thank you. Yeah, uh, I like your guest. Uh, good morning to you too. Fanatic. Right, check out your check out your fanatic. I'll check out your music too, man. With a cue. Thank you very much. You on Spotify so. and all that. Yep, it's on literally every platform. Nice. Okay. Cool. Cool. I play the drums myself. Not nice. professionally, but love music. Respect that. Uh, hey, I love music. Nice. That's not what you do every day, but it's cool. <laughs> He's not a fan <laughs> of my music. <laughs> yeah. I, play, I play Christian so-called music. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. From I'm back in the day. With you. <laughs> um, the, the, okay, it, it, I'm not the oldest guy that calls in, but I, I'm probably one of them. I'm 61. My first... Uh, time to get a chance to vote legally as an adult was 1980, like a year after I graduated from high school. Mm-hmm. And our governor was uh, at that time was uh, Ronald Reagan. Uh, those uh, crazy places that he opened up uh, kind of had something to do with a lot of the homelessness, but that was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. That was a long time ago. Um, I wouldn't say Texas. I would say a lot of states that are colder, this place would actually attract them to come here because you don't really have a winter uh, here in California. Yeah. Right. The weather is not as harsh, mm-hmm. and our politicians give a lot of free stuff. Yep. Now, the thing with Reagan being the best president, as soon as he left, all of this stuff started happening with letting the people out of crazy asylums. Wait, he closed the asylums. He didn't open them. He closed them. In California, I did it when I was younger. We think if California's doing good, 
the country's doing. It's not true. It's not true. I, I did live in Texas. They do have homeless. But I can tell you it's a lot harsher to be homeless in Texas than it is in California. Sure. Because California has a lot of programs and politicians to give things away. Yep. Sounds and like a lot of Christian get policies. The homeless out of here That's Christian you to you? Oh, sure. You think it's Christian? What? You think it's Christian to enable the homelessness to go out of control? I think that framing is awful. I would say it's Christian to like have concern for like the widows and the homeless. I think the Bible literally tells us to do so. Those homeless people are not widows. Some are. Most of them are well, not, and they don't need the help. Wait, they don't help, need the help, it, right? What about the people who, the are, who have mental they, health they, issues it, and they're homeless? The because of that? You're enabling them, and you're problem. causing their. What's that? Go ahead. I said giving them the help that he's talking about. I understand what he's saying, but it doesn't help the problem. Sure. It really doesn't. You're right, because sending, I mean, sending money to a homeless person who has like a mental health problem isn't going to actually Giving them food the issue. is, is uh, keeping the, making the problem worse, got a too. Church. So you think we should allow them to starve and deny them all financial... Like, with yes. Will Smith and his son. What was if that a man will not work, Will's... he shall not eat. So even That's for, in the Bible. What, what, was that movie, what was the movie with Will Smith and his son? They Did, were homeless. I don't know. Oh, Something okay. happy, the pursuit of happiness. That church, that Cecil Williams church... City Hall gives, last time I checked was in the 90s, City Hall gives Cecil Williams about 8 to $10 a plate for the homeless. He feeds them three times a day. You Shameful. do the math. It's ridiculous. Now, that area that that church is in, it's called a tenderloin. It's terrible. It's ter- and it's yeah. spreading all over San Francisco. And you think that's and Christian? I would say, no. t- I would no, say he, taking fanatic thinks that's Christian. Yeah, I think the idea of like feeding that, feeding the homeless, I and I would say well, like taking care of those. Who, what if they're homeless? What do you mean they're not poor? You that's have not poor. a lot. What of, does poor mean to you? you? Go ahead, William. I keep on interrupting. Go ahead. You have a, that's okay. I'll you have you. a lot of, uh, and I mean, I don't want to really mention any names. You have a lot of reverends and pastors that are connected with the uh, city hall and all right. of these homeless shelters. These are jobs for a lot of nonprofit people. They're getting over like a fat pig because as long as you're homeless, they're working. So a lot of times California overspends and they profit and overspend and waste on the very same subject, homelessness. Are they going to build anything for homelessness? I doubt it. The only thing you can do to fight homelessness is stop your behavior. Stop enabling it. Stop rewarding it. What do you mean they're going to build anything for the homeless? They're doing it all the time. You know, Fanatic, if my father... What do you mean Not by what case. do you mean by building something for the homeless? What are you talking about? Does that sound realistic to you with the expensive this property? How expensive this property is here? But they're already doing it. There are already sections in the state of California. It's Section eight. There are already there, there are there are you're there are, that. There are, are you condemning that, William? There are already sections in the, the state of California that are doing what you're talking about. Property owner, yes, I don't want no Section eight tenant. He's saying get rid of I don't that want stuff. The, I don't want the st- city government telling me who to rent to. You, they don't. It, you know Section 8 is optional, right? Like you don't have to allow a Section 8 person and to I live in your, in your house. So why would you say? I don't. I get that you don't I want don't. that. I had one tenant that was Section 8, and we had to pay them to get the hell out of our building. Well, you signed no. up for Section 8, didn't you? You you, you created yeah, no, that. No, I didn't. It was somebody older than me and my family that did that. Okay, so and someone, that person who, the owner along, did it. I had to do right, it. Right, so the owner did it. So then it's not a problem with Section 8 as a whole. Yeah, if, it's, well, if it's something that you I'll don't want to participate in, because it takes I your got property you. value but then, to, the, to, the, sure, to the whole. Sure, but if it's something you don't want to participate in, you don't have to. Why would, you, state. why would you demonize the system because it's something you personally don't want to participate in? How ridiculous is that? I'm, de- I'm demonizing the system by saying, no, I won't rent to a Section 8 tenant. No. And I got next door to him paying $6,000 a month. And then you got this one over here paying $300 a month. Do you think the two people mix? <laughs> or do you think my property value drops? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. There's a whole other conversation I, I, okay, there. I don't, I, it feels like you're interested I, you know, in talking more than like, a conversation. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I don't go with that safe term. Well, I appreciate I it, am, William. You know. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. All right. Take care. So you think Section 8 is good to have when you when it, you see that it just brings in ghetto people? 
So there's a bunch of things. So Section 8, if you know the history of Section 8 in this country, Section 8 was used by white people too. And it wasn't used specifically for like projects and, and to renting to other people, like for other people to do. What it was was the government was literally a, a performing, a, was it? it was called public housing, and they were allowing people, they were building structures within communities that were closer to like job opportunities and things like that in the suburbs for white people to be able to live. And it helped those people to assimilate and to kind of, um, it, it created economic economic mobility. What right. we're what we're looking at for Section Eight now is we're looking at a system in which we're we're giving Section Eight to people who are like who who are uh, economically deprived and then not providing any <laughs> other um, further structures. That's not economically deprived. You're you're giving them stuff. What do you? They're not deprived. They're overserved. I'm saying they're people. economically deprived because the average income of the person who's receiving Section Eight is significantly lower than the rest of the country. As it should right? be. They shouldn't be. Get, they shouldn't be given. You don't solve that. How by is that not economic stuff. deprivation? Because they they already they they can make it, they can make the money themselves. You don't give it to them. What? So, wait. And redistribute ghettos. But if they're not currently making the money, then by definition, they're economically deprived. They're not deprived though. What does deprived mean to you? Deprived means that you can't. Make money. You can make money. No, it means America. that you don't have it. But you. Ha but they do have money, and they're given money. What do you mean they have money if they have lower income than the rest of they the have country? Money. If they have lower income, they still have money. So that they have less than the rest of the country. But that doesn't mean they're deprived. Oh. You're acting like they're deprived or poor or homeless, and we need to feed them. But that's wrong. That's so wrong. You're making it worse. Well, are they? You're enabling. Would you you're say that a person? Poverty. Okay, so a person that's making in the state of California that's making twelve thousand uh, dollars a year. They have money. Would you say that they're poor? No. What does poverty mean to you? Because we have poverty lines in this country. We don't have poverty in this country. What, Nobody is what poor does poverty in this mean? What People does poverty mean? Starving. That's what starving means starving. Poverty means something else. Poverty doesn't mean what, what these people who are called poor. Poverty is a reflection of economic status by I know, definition. But it's, but it's talking about, you're talking about people who don't have anything no there's real poverty is like in a third world country Wait, you don't have that's real a poverty different degree here. of poverty exactly so, so why are we pretending that this is poverty so it's still poverty here it's, it's just it's poverty. a different degree no they're they're not underserved they're overserved yeah I, that's yeah. the whole that's the whole problem that you're that you're feeding this problem okay and you think it's being a christian okay so yeah i gotta look up the word po poverty for no you. man here let me get to a guest in the meantime okay please do <laughs> brian in california the state of being poor. Hey, Brian, it's me with Transparency and Merit. I've talked to you before, Hank. I also hey. uh, mentioned it with John. Hey, how's it going? I wanted to mention that, uh, I, I don't know how to say his name, Fantique? Uh, Fanatic. Um, Fanatic. Fanatic was uh, saying that, you know, you got to check data and stuff. Dictionary you know, is fake years, news, by the way. Don't be fooled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They change definitions <laughs> all the time. They do. That's yeah. our, our word change. For years. Because for of years, liberals. We, what? Yeah. What, 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 hold, years, really, really quick. Hold, uh, really, 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 let, me, let me ask him one question. Hold, hold one question. on, Brian. Hold on. I distracted him. You did. I'm sorry. I got to <laughs> throw this in here really quick. What does the word awful mean to you? Awful means evil. Okay. That word changed. Do you know that it used to mean like something that was inspiring and something amazing, right? Uh -huh. Full of awe. Yeah. Like awe-inspiring. That's different. That's, a, that's different from the fake news that, the, that we have right now with the dictionary. So words change, like yeah. that word used to mean something negative, and I mean, it used to mean, mean something positive, and now it means right. something negative, and those words can change in that way, but yeah. anytime a word changes, and we, we, we track that people changing by, on, with the definition. People and, change language. Are you aware that communists have come in and changed language on purpose, made up this racism thing? And they made, a, made they changed up the definition of vaccine. Wait, hold on. They've changed up all of these. They've brought in all of this language. So and they call it domestic violence. They just make up all these words, it's white supremacy and all this stuff. So you're saying racism didn't exist before communism? Racism has never existed. It is a false idea. It's a false vice. It's a worldly, atheistic, materialistic, shallow judgment upon white people to pretend that white people are are the most racist people in the world quote unquote when they're like the nicest people they like everybody so you don't like you don't think black people can be racist uh not according to their fake definition to their okay what so the dictionary is fake news so so then how do we have a conversation if the only way we can define any sort of words is through a dictionary and you no, reject that's dictionaries? that's not the only way. No, dictionaries are fake news nowadays. Okay, so then— You're uh, looking the, up poverty the only... to pretend to distract from the fact that real poverty is 
overseas, third world stuff. Sure, and I here. guess so. Then the only wealthy people are like the Jeff Bezoses of the world, right? No, the wealthy Any person people who are has anybody in America, pretty much. Okay, so so then there's no degrees to anything. There are degrees, but this is you're calling people poor as if we need to be helping them, which is not this case. That's incredibly simple minded. You think but, you're being Christian by enabling evil. Wow, that's taking sim- over. Okay, our, so so let, just you just, don't even know that the homelessness crisis is out of control. Sure, I don't have any data. If you look at data, of course. which brings me back to this caller. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know we only have 10 minutes that's why I'm I got rushing. you I got uh, you no problem we'll, we'll have you back another time or All I'll right. come on your show or whatever that'll work <laughs> Brian go ahead well I wanted to mention that uh, for years we thought the American casualty rate in the Korean War was over 50,000 and then later on there was someone made a decimal point mistake and we found out that it was less than 40,000 so how can we trust the data when, you know, so often it is wrong and incorrect. So it sounds like the question you're asking is if because of so the you're, fact— So you're talking about an honest mistake. I'm talking about dishonest data. Sure, and it sounds like the, oh, like well, rooted yeah, in your course. question. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean you, you go over the welfare statistics of black and white, they hide those statistics. There was a Phil Donahue show that showed proportionately that there were, like, more numerically blacks on welfare than white. Whoa. You can't find that on YouTube. You can also, there was a uh, th- there was a video of Richard Pryor talking about his time in the military. He spent the majority of his time in the military uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a in a uh, in a military jail after he had uh, uh, assaulted and stabbed a, a he and he and his fellow black soldiers stabbed and assaulted a fellow white soldier. That's also been removed from YouTube. The oh, same yeah. thing with Colin Flaherty. And his channel has been you ever heard of Colin Flaherty? from YouTube. Colin Flaherty is a great journalist. Uh, he yeah. says that Jesse Lee Peterson is the most important man in America. He's documented just the rampant black mob violence, black violent, black on white crime, black on Asian crime, black on handicap crime, black on old but people But you don't crime. believe race exists. I think race exists. Well, I, Racism doesn't exist. Okay, R- race well, is just I, a belief I, I that there's that like any fundamental. Blacks have been dead as against white, and this is yeah, blacks by the are left. encouraged oh, to man, hate whites and think this racism stuff. Anyway, w- go ahead. They You're getting here. frustrated. And, no, and no, it's, it's fine. Not, it's it's totally. It, go ahead. It's okay. I, I I just I I think that it's really insane because it's hard to have a conversation with a person that believes race exists but doesn't believe that a person can believe that race creates fundamental differences and therefore a superiority of another race right for example you don't do you believe that exists. do you believe that there is a person that, that a person can exist that believes that because he is white he is superior to other people can a person have that belief yes okay that but that's belief, not racism that belief by definition is racism no, if that's not. not racism then tell me what racism is racism doesn't exist right so then it's because, crazy because, you're basically saying look, any definition definition that actually talks about what racism is doesn't it doesn't mean anything because dictionaries made it but you're saying you're able to even say that this thing isn't racism but you have no idea of what racism actually is i know what racism actually is because i've asked you that multiple times what is racism it doesn't exist right so then you don't know what it is because you're saying it doesn't exist so you can't you can't say racism is and then say racism is not why do you think blacks care so much about this imaginary racism thing well, first off, again, you can't say racism is and simultaneously say racism is not. When you say racism does not exist, that means racism is not. There is no such the question. thing as racism. Answer the question. Why do you think blacks care so much about this imaginary racism thing? Sure. So in ignoring your contradiction that you just said there, I don't think racism is imaginary. I didn't contradict myself. You did. You said racism is not and said racism is. Those are two it different things. It does not exist. So to say racism does, not, racism does not exist is the same thing as saying racism is not. There is no racism. Yeah. Right. But right. then you also said you know what racism is. No, I didn't. You literally said those words verbatim. I said well, if it's I It's probably said going it, too fast for you. It's yeah, okay. Because um, listen, listen. Why do you think black people are hung up on this imaginary racism thing when everybody knows they're the most hung up on race? Show the most in-group preference. Show the most hatred toward other races. Okay. So have you ever seen... Uh, the, has there ever been legislation that was racist in intent? Answer the question. 
the, I'm asking you, I am, this is a way of answering it. So basically, the reason why black people still identify and recognize racism is because it, one, obviously Except exists. Except for in themselves. Uh, one, racism obviously Except e- for in themselves. Sure, if you want me to answer your question. Go one, ahead. racism obviously exists as demonstrated by laws that were needed to be passed in order to ensure that racist individuals didn't carry out problematic um, acts against black people. Have you noticed human nature? People think of themselves as better, and they base those things on shallow beliefs. Like race. For example. Okay, so then that means, so then by definition that would be racism. No, because it's a false vice. Have you noticed? What do you mean by false vice? What does that mean? A false vice is pretending that calling anybody racist who, who criticizes blacks for example. No, that's not. Or who does something against a black. No, 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 no. We're, no, no, no. we're it's, talking about the. This is in practice. We're, we're talking no, about no, no, in no. practice. Screw the practice. We're talking no, about the reality. ideology of the person who has this belief that they're superior. But that's not By why, definition is heart, racist. At heart, that's not why they think that they're better than everybody. Wait, but you. Everybody thinks that they're better than, so then, than everybody. How, we can't talk angry, about racism. You think that you're better than the person you're angry at. We can't talk about racism if we can't agree to a definition of what the word means. Because it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a red herring. Okay, so because then if the it's person, a red herring, then I can't answer your question because you don't crying, even believe racism means anything. The person crying racism, it doesn't mean anything. The person right. crying racism is just as guilty of this false judgment and a, as the person who is allegedly racist. Okay, so Usually we got, the person who's so-called racist is being called racist for telling the truth or for doing something that he has a right to do. Okay, so we got to move past that? the conversation of race altogether. If you don't believe racism exists, then we can't have a conversation about you, black people's ideologies re- regarding racism. Because you don't believe racism exists. You, you just ignored everything I just said, though. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Okay. You just said, you just ignored the fact that black people are refused to look at themselves, but want, want to accuse everybody else of being imaginary racist. Okay. If you say so. I don't, I don't know. I don't you know. don't see that? Uh, no, not at all. You don't? I think black people look at themselves all the time. You think black people know that they're the, the, th- the very thing that they accuse white people of being? Uh, well, hold on. What, what is that thing that they're accusing white people of being? So-called racist. Right, but but you're now assigning yeah. racism to black people after saying racism doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. exist. So then how are you saying that black Everybody's people are racist? Everybody's guilty of feeling superior to everybody. So how are you saying that? Ra- how are you saying black people are racist if you're saying racism doesn't exist? I'm not saying that they're racist. I'm saying that they're guilty of the thing that they accuse others of being, which what is, is that judging. Thing? Judgment. It's a judgment? Yeah. A judgment, like, so what, you're saying that... What, a false judgment. I mean, people judge all the time. Exactly. What's specific exactly. about this judgment? Exactly. Is there why, any specificity is, or is it just as broadly this, as judgment? Why is there this imaginary outrage about this imaginary racism stuff? I, again, I don't... Because I, it's, cause they don't want to look at themselves. Yeah, I don't know. This the is too The most judgmental people are always crying racism. Have you noticed? I don't. I didn't notice. You don't notice that no. judgmental people... Have you ever seen this person cry again, racism? Again, this conversation can't happen because you don't believe racism exists. I don't know how, we have, we're, how we're circling a conversation around the topic of racism where you say racism literally doesn't exist. It doesn't doesn't exist because everybody is a judgmental person. Okay, I'll let you have it. But you, okay, blind person. Uh, Brian, anything else? We got to end. Um, I would like to ask his question about South Africa and black people's racial vendettas. We have. I don't think he answered. Yeah, that. yeah. I know. We have only have a minute to go. We got to end. Brian, we'll have to we'll have to have you back on next time we talk. I talk with him. Oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. All right. I would love to go into that issue. Yeah, sounds good, man. Uh, quick super chats. We have just a minute to go. Oh, man, this went fast. Uh, your girlfriend gave a super chat on Streamlabs and says, I'm sorry, but those reasons for California being the best state were the most superficial I've heard yep. since the claim has been made. That superficial stuff and subjective. Isn't worth it for how much they steal from you in taxes. Mm. I don't know. I think the reason why they steal so much, quote unquote, in taxes is because of the fact that so many people want to be here. It's the best state. Lin Yun Chin says generic mouth breathing fool scorns personal observation and undermines common sense is confirmation bias. All his number fixation is confirmation bias. He conforms to what prescribed to him to believe via insecurity lead imagination of education. You follow that? Listen, he's talking about imagination of education, and that was so poorly written. I think he has the imagination of education. Hydro says, <laughs> fanatic, are you ashamed of black people, and instead of being aware of what is going on in their communities, you rather make excuses? Why would I be ashamed of black people? We're amazing. Wow. Animus says, this guest is a mama. He nice. 
Sure. I think I'm a pretty <laughs> nice guy. I, I will own that one. I, I'm a pretty nice guy. Uh, promote your stuff. We got, we're over time. We got to end. <laughs> uh, it's real simple. Follow me, Fanatic, for all of my music, F-A-N-A-T-I-Q, twitch.tv slash Mr. Fanatic for like m- m- my political commentary and, and, and all of that. And then YouTube is under Ask Fanatic, A-S-K-F-A-N-A-T-I-Q. You can find all my stuff there. We'll um, have to talk again, man. For sure, man. It was great. Because um, this was really too short. We didn't really have, because I felt... Like, I had to rush you and yes, change sir. up stuff. Graham in North Carolina wanted to talk to the guests, say, liberals change data and definitions. Sure. I, I think that th- those things happen. Look, if anybody has any questions for me, I'm always active on my Twitter. I'm nice. always active on my stream. You can ask me anything. I'm willing to have conversations. We can do it. We didn't even get to this stuff about uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, Kyle Rittenhouse yeah, or Colin Kaepernick. He was, was not a fan of the Colin Kaepernick comparing Slavery to uh, yeah, the was, NFL, by the way, guys. That was atrocious. <laughs> and, uh, all right. And the reparations. Anyway, we'll have to talk again, man. For sure. But I appreciate you coming in. Yeah, it was great. And I hope it was worth it, the trip for you. It was. It was. I had a good time. Nice. All right, guys. The Hake Report. The Fallen State is going to premiere in like an hour. Uh, thank you. And catch me on the Hippy Dippy Round Table. On the Twitch stream, I'm gonna be. Oh, wow. I'm gonna be on Dylan Burns TV yeah. on Twitch th- tonight. Oh, nice. Three and a half hours, man. Yeah, yeah brutal. That's how those panels go. <laughs> I've never done that for sure. Thanks, guys. Take care.